This is Grocery Talks with Food Distribution Guys Richard Baker, where we provide food manufacturers with a greater understanding of Canada's grocery sector. And now, here's our host, Richard Baker. Today, I'm pleased to be joined on the line by Mr. Turner Wyatt, CEO and co-founder of Upcycled Food Association. They are a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to reduce food waste through upcycled foods. A pleasure to have you, Turner, and thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Could you please just provide us with a brief overview of Upcycled Food Association and the history behind the organization? Absolutely. So Upcycled Food Association is a nonprofit focused on preventing food waste by accelerating the upcycled economy. And we were formed a couple of years ago by a number of businesses who recognized there was an opportunity in the market to create new products out of otherwise wasted food, therefore preventing food waste and creating new, more sustainable products that also make more money. And if we're going to grow this industry, we really need to engage consumers as a collective and use our collective voice and collective power in the retail environment and in the consumer environment to um, create sort of a, a seismic shift, a paradigm shift in our food system to more systematically adopt upcycling across the entire food supply chain. Right. So this group of businesses work together um, to create Upcycled Food Association and since then, we've been really successful in growing that network to about 185 businesses across almost 20 countries, Wow! Um, launching the first ever product certification, defining upcycled food, creating a new food waste funder circle with Refed, which actually launches today. Um, so it's it's been a wild ride over the Great. very short period of time. So what is the definition of upcycled food? Well, there's a official definition that we... <laughs> came up with, uh, with the help of Harvard Law School and World Wildlife Fund and some other groups. Um, but it's really that definition is basically that it has to prevent food waste. Right. An upcycled product has to prevent food waste. And so when we created the Upcycled Certified Program, which is the world's first third-party verified product and ingredient certification program for upcycled products, what we employ our third party certifying body to do is to make sure that any product or ingredient that's applying for upcycled certified is indeed preventing food waste. Okay. And so really, so the way, so we know that uh, almost 70% of all food produced globally is wasted. So what you're saying here is that by using these ingredients, we are actually contributing to, a, to, to the solution of uh, reducing food waste. Exactly. Yeah, it's about a trillion dollars worth of food is wasted every year. My God. And yeah, it's just an immense amount of greenhouse gas emissions. And according to Project Drawdown, preventing food waste is the single most effective solution to preventing green, uh, excuse me, to prevent global warming of two degrees C. So it's a very right. impactful environmental solution. And it's also an important economic solution when as we continue to grow our population, we need ways to increase our food supply that don't put exacerbated pressure on the environment. And so right. upcycling is really a way to, for our food system to just become more efficient, to take the ingredients that were previously going to waste and include them into new products that consumers love because they're nutritious, delicious, and because they're sustainable. Okay. So what else other than, you know, purchasing these products, what else can consumers do to reduce, you know, can reduce their personal food waste? Given I recognize, I believe that like 61% of all food waste is contributed through consumer households. Yeah, it's about $1,500 uh, it, in an average U.S. American household, 1500 bucks of food waste waste every year. So wow. individual consumers definitely have a big incentive to prevent their own food waste. And there's tons of things people can do, you know, it's been shown going to the grocery store more frequently. Um, you know, keeping a list of things that are in your refrigerator so you don't lose it at the very back corner until it's bad. Um, there's tons of things and many millions of blog entries that you can read about online. Right. Um, can help your household, your family prevent its own waste. But the thing is that even if you are at 
zero percent waste out of your own household, even if you don't, you're not wasting a single scrap of food. Right. There's still a lot of food being wasted out there in the supply chain of food. I'll give you an example. You can buy a um, you know package of pre-made guacamole in the grocery store which is a huge market by the way a lot of people buy pre-made guacamole yes correct yes they do and you can you could just get every last bit of the guacamole out of the container not waste a drop and what is still going to waste out there in the supply chain of creating that that product is things like the avocado pits Mm. seeds those are still going to waste the the products behind the scene exactly the the ingredients and the products that are right associated with the created creation of that guacamole product even if you yourself in your own household are doing your very best to prevent the waste and so what we have to do as consumers is is to start thinking more holistically about the entire food supply chain not just the scope one emissions in carbon accounting, it's called scope one is like the exhaust coming out of my car. That's like the food waste coming out of my own refrigerator. But yes. then you also have to think about scope two and scope three. What are the other ways that I'm emitting um, through you know, the, the food that I buy and the energy that I consume? There's emissions happening elsewhere. And so and the food is the same way. There's a lot of emissions and energy that goes into the production of food. Interesting. Um, well, that throughout the supply chain. So if when you become a member, then this is where you then are able to, for example, sell off your your excess ingredients that may be going to waste to other firms that now are now making it into these great new products. Exactly. So for example, one of our members is a, a small business in um, the northeast of the U.S. called Reveal, and they make a probiotic tea beverage out of avocado seeds. And so they're wow. taking the avocado seeds um, <laughs> from the companies that are currently making, uh, you know, making guacamole, and so to speak, and um, making a new product out of that. So preventing it from going to waste and making a new product out of it that's healthy and nutritious for consumers. So it's really a win-win, uh, and it's also helping to prevent um, climate change, which, because again, according to Project Drawdown, preventing food waste is the number one solution to global warming. Right. So, so what? Are, so, what are the standards firms must uh, achieve in order to have your logo on their packaging? As I said before, it's a third-party verified program. Okay. Which means yep. It's really rigorous, and you really have to have your ducks in a row to make sure that you have a handle on your entire supply chain so that you can prove to this certifying body, look, without us creating this product, there would be additional food waste that we're currently preventing as a result of this product. So uh, in order to do that, you have to show that you are preventing food waste directly because of the creation of your product. There's also a B2B ingredient certification um, which is mm. which is important um, to note, and uh, about a third of the of total number of products and ingredients that we're certifying are B two B ingredients, which shows that if you want to be a part of this booming upcycled movement, you don't have to create your own upcycled product from scratch I, using some otherwise wasted ingredient within your own supply chain. You can go out there and just purchase a certified upcycled excuse me, upcycled certified yeah. ingredient that someone else is creating, use it in your own product formulation and therefore kind of be a part of this booming, really exciting environmental movement around upcycling. Excellent. And of course, we're not just talking, for example, um, food products that can be on the grocery shelves. We could also be talking food products that are going to be sold through restaurants and, and hotel chains. So the fact is you can sell that into the hotel chain. So when you're eating that, you're, you may be actually, again, contributing to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Not only that, there's all kinds of products, not even just food products that you can make out of upcycled ingredients. There's as many products as you can make out of food ingredients. You can make the same number of products out of upcycled food ingredients. Things like cosmetics, pet mm. food, dietary right. supplements, personal care products. These are all products that Upcycled Food Association is certifying as upcycled certified, 
And therefore, we're moving towards a more sustainable economy in which consumers can choose to prevent food waste in every aisle of the grocery store simply by choosing upcycle certified products. So do consumers understand what, what upcycled food means? Not yet. That's really the, the main goal of our organization. Yes. Um, our, we have a new research fellowship at Upcycled Food Association, and we're helping researchers all over the world to discover all kinds of important information about this booming industry, such as how much do consumers really understand this and what's the best way to communicate upcycling to them. And one of the things we've learned is that it's only about 3% of consumers currently know what upcycle products are. Wow. Which to some people that seems uh, not kind of pessimistic, but to me, I feel really optimistic about that because to me, that means there's 97% white space. We Correct. To just define the entire narrative of the, around this, this uh, movement from the very beginning and we have a, a blank slate, a, a fresh start with consumers that allows us to communicate really clearly about this topic of food waste, which by the way, is ubiquitously agreed upon. 99% of people agree that food waste is a problem. Okay, so wow. there's virtually no one that disagrees. There's no adversary, you know, that it's not like, you know, for, I, sometimes I compare us to plant-based, you know, there's this booming plant-based food industry. Yes. And on the other hand, there's people who are anti-plant-based, like the meat and dairy lobbies. They really don't want you to buy more plant-based <laughs> milk agree. alternatives because they're losing money. Of course they are. In the upcycled world, no one's losing money as, as upcycling grows. In fact, it's making the food industry more money, which is really important because those are the people who we need to buy into this so that we can accelerate this important environmental yep. solution and address climate change in the near term. So while 3% of people know what upcycle products are currently, 80% of them would buy upcycle products if they knew. So it's our organization's goal, Upcycle Food Association, to educate millions of consumers about what, is, what are upcycle products and what impact do they have and how can I participate in and affect that impact as a consumer with my purchasing power um, and so it's a it's a really kind of empowering way we hope for right. consumers to be a part of the solution. Excellent. Well, I congratulate you for you know for you know for your endeavor and what you're trying to do. And uh, 100% agree with you that all of us have a role in how we can reduce you know food waste, recognizing you know what what's at stake here for us. So, for anyone that's listening, what, what what's the best way to make contact with you, Turner? Upcycle Food Association has an Instagram and LinkedIn and website, and I encourage you to follow us on all of those platforms so that you can ultimately do the most important thing, which is to connect with the brands. Look for the Upcycled Certified Mark in your grocery store. It's starting to pop up. We've certified a couple hundred uh, products and ingredients so far, and what we found is that there's been 700 million pounds of food waste prevented just by those couple hundred products and ingredients. Wow. And you can be a part of that solution by looking for the upcycle certified mark in your grocery store or on your online grocery store and purchasing those products. And um, they all have really mm -hmm. creative and um, delicious, nutritious, impactful products. And I really encourage people to look for them. Well, thank you again to Turner Wyatt for uh, being our guest. And if you're a food manufacturer seeking distribution in Canada's grocery sector, please visit our website, www.fooddistributionguy.com. Thank you again for your time, Turner. Thanks for having me.